tucked away down a dark corridor at UCT, biomechanical engineer George Vacatos often sits through the night designing implants that are changing people's lives. At the end of the line is a patient waiting. And uh, you, cannot, you cannot play with that particular time. Born from his love of anatomy and his excellence in engineering, he ensures they are able to handle the stresses and strains that bones endure. The implants are 3D printed out of a medical titanium at the center of rapid prototyping and manufacturing in Bloemfontein. In just over two weeks, orthopedic surgeons are able to operate with these individualized implants, transforming the lives of people like Duan Brink. The aliasis is a lot stronger. I discovered that I couldn't uh, cross my one leg over the other, and um, I struggled to start walking, and my wife suggested I go do some yoga, and I said I'd rather go and see a physio. When a little stiffness in your hip turns out to be a massive cancerous tumour in your pelvis, that is pretty terrifying, especially when you have two young boys to raise. I was able to walk, but I couldn't run anymore. Um, and I used to be a strong runner. Eventually, it got to a point where I couldn't even play soccer with my kids. And that made me realise that I had to do something about it because I couldn't continue like this. Just months ago, Johannesburg chartered accountant Duan Brink underwent an 18-hour operation to remove a rare cancerous tumour that couldn't be treated with either chemo or radiation. It was growing through his hip socket, explains orthopaedic surgeon Dr. Richard Kite. Cancers are a bit like a creeper. They creep along blood vessels and nerves, and they actually do it in a very clandestine way so that you can't define them. The more aggressive tumors will double in three to six weeks' time. It was an extremely complex operation and potentially life-threatening. I'm going to leave my kids, potentially, alone with my wife. <laughs> but I made it, and I'm here, and um, every day I look forward to spending time with him. So. Duan pulled through and his operation was a success. Pelvic tumours and trauma have the most devastating impact on people, leaving them immobile and in crippling pain. There are also the most difficult bones to access and fix, explains orthopaedic surgeon Dr. André Olafir. Is repairing a pelvis more difficult than other bones? Yes, indeed. The problem with a pelvis is, is the 3D anatomy. It's extremely difficult to reconstruct that. It differs from patient to patient. And if there's a big defect for either a tumour patient or patient who had three, four previous operations and there's now a big gap in the pelvis, to reconstruct that is very difficult because of the anatomy. The pelvis houses the bladder, bowel and genitalia, as well as the major nerves and blood supply to the legs, all of which have to be navigated around. Every pelvis is unique, so if off-the-shelf implants are used, it can leave people with one leg shorter and less mobile. You cannot design something and expect the surgeon to just prong it in and put it in the pelvis. You have to design something that can actually bypass all the structures, not to injure them, and that is the difficult part. Once George has the CT scan of the patient, he designs an implant that is the exact replica of their bone, taking into account where the surgeon wants to attach it. So I took the correct side, the good side, mirrored it, and now I have symmetry of the hip. And on this particular part, I build the implant, which is that. One of the most critical aspects of George's designs is a jig which shows the surgeon exactly where he decided to cut and where to anchor the implant. We can practice, if you like, making sure that the position that this fits is exact because it can only fit it in one plane which allows us to then pin and cut the pelvis exactly as one needs to. It's uh, actually impossible to do this operation successfully and reliably without such a, a jig. After a freak car accident at the age of 37, Mark Yonker was told he would never walk again. After 18 months in a wheelchair in extreme pain, he was losing hope. It felt like you took a taser, literally electric taser, and tasing the bottom of my foot 24 hours a day, and the top of my foot felt like you took a cheese grater to it 24 hours a day. He lost his job, and if it wasn't for his family, he would have been destitute. But he was determined to find help. 
One orthopedic surgeon spent months looking for suitable implants from overseas suppliers, but none were viable. George was the first person that uh, actually had a breakthrough and had a solution. How remarkable that you had options abroad, meanwhile right here is a solution. That was to me the unbelievable part. I mean, in Cape Town, and we all have these thoughts of European doctors are more superior, they've got more technology, they've got all these things that, that we don't have in South Africa. Um, so it was to me quite a surprise that it was actually my backyard less than 50 kilometers from where I'm staying. The important thing is that we can do it locally. That is a massive cost saving for us. We've tried to import these implants, but to get the custom clearance, the medical aids to pay for these, it's not easy, and it takes a very long time. Infection is one of the biggest problems with all implants. Yapi Diedrix had four hip replacements, and after the last op, they told him there was nothing more they could do. At the age of 27, having just run the Comrades and was training to be a professional cyclist, a head-on collision stripped him of his mobility and, at times, his sanity. Sometimes you feel like, why keep on living? Why don't you stop living in it? I was at the stage I couldn't handle it anymore. Eventually, they couldn't do a hip replacement for him anymore. And the simple reason is that you don't have fixation points to do a normal hip replacement if there's not enough bone stock left. If I had to go and sit or come and visit you, I nearly had to lie back in the sofa and that, and my leg had to be straight in it. Now I can sit nearly normal in it. Uh, it's much easier in that. What's groundbreaking here is the close collaboration between the surgeons and the designer, right up to the point of inserting the implant. George even ensures he meets the patient just before they go under. You know, if you're collaborating with someone overseas, almost always you don't even know the designer. You're not sure of what product you're getting. With George, not only do you know what product you're getting, he's in theatre and he's making jolly certain that it works. What drives you, George? Because you're doing this over and above your academic commitments. Yes, I do. I'm full-time academic at university. This is my night time. What I would say makes my day is that my design has a function very, very quickly into somebody's body that that person can actually, not being whole again as before, but having an almost natural life again. And for these patients, it's nothing short of miraculous. The feeling of being able to work again, to contribute again, is a massive relief. They told me two years ago I'll never walk again, um, but through motivation and the grace of God, I'm standing here in front of you. I think probably less about the future, and I'm a lot more present in the moment with my kids, with my wife, and I pulled through, and I'm so, I'm so relieved.